Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Dave Moore here. Wanted to make a video basically on the use of the Raven Concealment Eidolon holster. I know in the video before this I talked about it a little bit, but in this video I kind of want to show drawing from different uh, styles, whether you're sit sitting, standing, whatever, and just kind of show that there is a very good use for the appendix style holsters, which obviously you know all that, guys. So now just keep in mind that I'm not an expert in this. I usually carry outside the waistband. So if I screw up or bobble with the shirt or something, I mean, it's going to happen. There ain't nobody who's going to do everything perfectly every time. And if you say that you're one of those people, well, you're lying. You don't exist. So just pretty much stick with me and I'll show you a few uses of this holster. All right. So use one, obviously, is just drawing with a normal shirt on. So pull the shirt up, grab the holster. Tilt it out and complete your draw stroke. So it'll look something like this. Then to reholster, just make sure your shirt's out of the way and you go straight in until it clicks. So that's pretty much standing from the side view. As you can probably tell, it's a lot easier to actually clear your garment because since this holster is holding it so close to your body, it's not going to get caught on that grip. Which the problem I have is when it's on my hip and you go to pull up, well, it'll get caught on that grip very easily. So a benefit of the appendix style holster, especially uh, the Eidolon, which is what this one's all about, this just only refers to the Eidolon, is your shirt will usually always clear. Now, obviously that is not a given it's not going probably won't happen every time but just from my usage my experience it's not having any problems clearing all right so next is seated obviously uh, I'm not trying to give you a crotch shot here but I can only fit so much in the frame but seated leaning back kind of relaxed even you can get it out of that holster and back in the holster very easily so if you ever carry outside of the waistband, you know that you're dealing with this side of the chair or if you're in a car or whatever. So I can even lean back and sit comfortably and still, see, still get that gun out. So like I said, if I screw up, I screw up, whatever. But every now and then you will miss that shirt. So you just got to try for it again. And sitting, leaning forward, you see something going on. As you can tell, the only thing really, if you're leaning forward on the gun, especially if you drive and you're kind of like hunched forward a little bit, is you you really have to get your hand behind that gun because it is kind of digging it into your stomach. So you have to make sure you clear that and dig your hand behind there. But you know, it's not a problem. It's just at that point, it's just a training issue. You need to make sure that that you're training and you know that that can happen. So that's a few styles of carry uh, right there. As you can tell, the main ones are seated and standing, obviously. Uh, the one thing, if you're leaning forward and you're driving, as you saw, I kind of maybe bobbled it trying to get it out because you really have to get your hand behind there. If you think of how the idle line works in my previous video, how I explained it was those two pieces, the claw and the wedge, are pushing the gun into your body, basically, and that's what makes it so concealable. But with that, you're going to have a tighter fitting gun, i.e. your body is directly on every part of that gun, every part of that grip. So when you're leaning forward and you know if your fat's hanging over or whatever, you have to really make sure that you kind of get your body out of the way so you can get behind that gun. Now, if you, if you can't get your hand behind that gun, can you still grab it out? Yeah, I mean, so if you can't, get all of your hand behind the gun, can you still get it out? Well, yeah, you can. You know, obviously do the normal draw. You, you can even grab it, which a lot of times this is how I grab it anyway, with just your fingers, like right here, and just kind of get your fingers in there. So here, I'll do it from the side. Get your fingers in and pull it out. So your grip is not ideal at this point, but can it be done? Yes, it can be done. So like I said, really, if you, if you can't get all of your hand 
around that gun, then just get it out. I mean, if, if you can get it out and you only have a grip like this, and that's what you have, well, that's what you have. So instead of saying, oh no, screw it, get it out with that shitty grip and shoot because no handgun that you're carrying, especially in the normal calibers, is gonna recoil out of your hand. And like I've always said, you know, if it is recoiling out of your hand, then maybe, just maybe, you shouldn't carry that caliber because it's too mu much for you. You know, it's kind of like the story with the 10 mil and the 40 cal. Well, the 10 mil was originated, but a lot of the female officers and hell, a lot of the male officers said it was too potent. They couldn't control it. So they shortened it down for the 40 cal. Well, you should obviously be able to control your gun just fine. And whether or not you're training with it enough, that, that could be all it is. You just need to go to a class and learn better grip, better control the firearm. Or maybe you shouldn't shoot you know, a 10 mil or something. But most of you are carrying not nine millimeters or 40s and it's not a problem. I mean, I can shoot you know, with the Elton John grip like this just fine. I mean, yeah, there's more recoil, but it's not, it's not gonna fly out of my hand. So that's mostly it, guys. Uh, like I said, there's really not a whole lot of positions to worry about shooting from. Seated, standing's pretty much the main ones and the considerations of both for the most part. So keep shooting.